sharing a bathroom with a staph infection. Uh, the basic idea here is that you need to have an understanding between the difference of an, a space that is painted and is not. This is an intimate area that has to be respected and there has to be a set of procedures to work in that environment. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that um, you have somebody with high masculinity and high conscientiousness who will instruct all the people that are going to be using this bathroom as to how it will be used. You don't want advice, you don't want suggestions, you want instructions, you want orders. You want somebody who can actually go in there and unashamedly uh, take charge and make sure that rules are followed. This is an intimate space and it has to be treated as such. And for understanding how to use a space like this, one of the things you can do is kind of pretend like uh, you get somebody that isn't in infected and you go and you have them play the role of somebody who is. And they can carry around uh, anything. My suggestion is just get a roll of ma like thin masking tape and uh, play the game of this is, this is good, this is not. Everywhere that has a piece of tape um, is declared as having as being tainted, um, as being potentially unsafe. And you could start with a piece of tape on hand. Say, okay, well, I'm now I have hands that are 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 unwell, and or a counter or a doorknob, and you go through, uh, and you can go through and you can reproduce what I'm going to talk about. Um, and un visually understand how things are going to work and why things would be good or not. So the very first thing is we're going to make some assumptions that, that you've got the space to work with. If you don't have space to work with, you'll need to figure it out. Um, that's going to be one of the biggest issues is making sure that, that there are a couple of, of clear areas that um, They'll, they will be clean after the fact, but they need to be cleared ahead of time just to save a lot of effort. If you need to, you can uh, take like anything, a storage bin or a laundry bin or something like that and turn it on its head and use the bottom as a flat surface to put like cleaning materials, for example. That's the big one. Um, so let's say that we've got somebody in the bedroom. So get up clean their hands. Clean hands, walk over, clean, clean a surface. Go to clothes, clean clothes, clean clothes on clean surface. So these are the clothes to be changed into. Um, clean hands, go to exit the bedroom, clean doorknob, go into the bathroom, open the door, clean doorknob. There should be a surface already set aside. For me, it's the left side of the sink. Um, it's already clean, but we're going to make it dirty. Okay. There's also a right-hand side of my sink, which is never used by that person, um, and it's always going to be guaranteed clean because only clean things go there. It is still washed every day, so um, but there's no immediate concern right now. Cl clean clothes, walk through, and put them in the clean space. Now, you've got a door that's open. It's clean, bedroom door, bathroom door. If you need to, exit, exit the bathroom, exit the uh, close the bedroom door, if you use locks or whatever, do that. Come into the bathroom, close the bathroom door. Bathroom door is still clean. Now the reason you're doing things like that is you're, you don't have a person with like a bundle of clean clothes who's who reflexively presses it up against their chest while they're closing a door, for example. Because chest is, so for example, my friend has got on his chest and his legs. So we're going to so that's a bad idea. Even if you assume that the outside of his shirt is clean, it's not. Never, don't think like that. Okay, in a bathroom, a clean door. So you've got two sides of the sink. The right-hand side has a bundle of clean clothes in whatever, um, it doesn't matter how they're piled up as long as they're not going to fall anywhere. You've got a, I should have said, while bringing in clean clothes and also bring a clean towel in and fold it and put it on top of the clothes or something like that. And uh, close the door. So disrobing 
is as follows. Pants come off. Pants are, are hung on a hook on the door. So you're going to have to get a, a, a hook on your door. And nobody else can use that space. Um, shirt comes off. Uh, shirt is laid down flat, in my case, to the left of the sink. Um, socks are taken off. Socks are put on top of the shirt. Underwear is take, put off, taken off, put on top of the shirt. Um, I'm not really sure how to treat a woman with a bra, so I'm going to make the assumption that you, you are going to be washing them, at, I'm sorry, every day. Um, and so that's, that's your concern for having like a little mesh delicates bag and just making sure stuff like that is not ruined by being washed a lot. Because yes, I know bras are expensive. Okay, so now you've got a naked person on a floor. Go to the shower. In my case, what I'm doing is you don't want to have this, this person open the shower. In my case, I've got a, like a cloth shower cloth uh, curtain. Um, reach to the top. I've got a bar at the top with everything kind of hung down. So my friend is going to reach to the top and he's going to slide the rings across. And that's the way to open. That's the way to, to interact with the shower curtain. He doesn't reach for the... Most people reach for like the, the fabric and pull it open that way. He doesn't do that. that he's not allowed to do that. That way that person is the only person that makes this change in their life. Nobody else cares. Um, nobody else needs to change. So nobody else needs to get stressed. Um, enter into the shower, shower. You know, like, like closed by the rings, shower. Now, that person is going to be using antibacterial soap, so there's no uh, immediate concern for them splashing infection everywhere. Um, so wash open the curtain now the hands are dirt hands are hands are dirty because the hand so the clothes were taken off earlier so hands are dirty hands are uh, the, the top ring is dirty top ring is going to be really hard to clean so we're just going to see assume that's permanently permanently tainted open the open the curtain keep keep the curtain open exit dirty hands there should be a pump of uh of soap on the uh, bathroom counter. Uh, so that's the alcohol stuff that dries really quick. Use that. Okay, clean hands, clean body. Okay, so the but to, I, I really hope that this can be arranged because there's a trick with getting out of the bathroom because you can make the assumption that the, that the floor is also tainted and the solution for that is um, Open the curtain, hands are dirty, so still in the bathtub. Open the curtain, clean the hands while in the, stay in the bathtub. So you got the antibacterial soap anyway. Just have a little, you know, figure it out. How you clean the tap, how you wash your hands, etc. We're going to deal with the bathroom in a second with a shower area. Reach for the towel. In my case, it, there's a toilet right next to the, the shower. So you can actually open it, and it's right there, and you can reach in for a towel. And it's just, it's just on the very back top of the toilet seat. Or not of the, I don't know what it's called. You know, not the seat, but the water tank behind it. My apologies to people in the UK that have it in a weird place. Figure it out. Take the towel, towel off while standing in the bath, bathtub. And then take it like, like so. And then magic carpet it out onto the floor in the bathroom. If you, in my case, I've got like a... a anti-slip mat, which you should have, because that's actually a surprising amount of injuries happen with somebody stepping out onto tiles and slipping with wet feet, especially the elderly. Um, or just the incredibly clumsy, I mean, not me. I've never, I don't know what you mean. Um, I had a, a flatmate who, who uh, actually slipped, and he was a big guy, so he just... Um, and he went and re reached for a towel rack, and he just, just pulled it right up off the wall. <laughs> so, I mean, it was funny, but he hurt himself. Um, so you've got a towel down, and that clean person steps on the, the clean towel, and that, that'll be good enough. So out, out of the shower, wash the hands again, 
if you need if this person needs to kind of like get into the rest of the bathroom and you want to keep the towel down you can actually like reverse moonwalk and kind of kick the towel ahead and you're, you're going to have the towel kind of be right in front of the sink um this is the nuisance so if if the pants are to be reused make sure that the, that they can walk over to it to the back of the bathroom door shirt from the, the clean patch shirt underwear socks uh, I don't think the order really matters um, but um, I would um, I mean it doesn't it just doesn't matter um, go reach for the pants put the pants on now we're gonna we're gonna play the game of the pants being tainted because in my case it is so puts on the tainted pants again this means that you got somebody who's maybe they're changing their pants every day and you shower twice a day and you're you don't just have the pants or don't want to do the laundry that often or what have you whatever your circumstances happen to be now what you have is you've got a, a tainted shower rod which you can just leave because it's going to be too hard to clean all the all the like the little rungs and stuff so you just it's their reserved space nobody else touches that space not that anybody ever does anyway open the bathroom door go to the bedroom open the bedroom door so you've clean hands clean bathroom doorknob anyway clean bedroom doorknob anyway take the bundle of dirty clothes and the reason that there was a shirt down with underwear and socks on top of it is now you can you can bundle it up like it's uh you know like a runaway in one of those books who wants to tie it to a stick uh, and you can bundle it up like that uh, you can go for the you can go for the towel first and 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 then throw it over the entire affair so now dirty hands dirty clothes take the clothes laundry basket right away now if you don't have a laundry basket that's been out in the open prepared prepared then uh in the same process as going and preparing the clean clothes you just get the laundry basket out and ready in front of the bedroom door it doesn't really matter the walk to the dirty clothes straight to the laundry basket now this is going to be a laundry basket set aside just for that person they're going to be hauling it out and doing their own laundry etc again we want to make things convenient for everybody else just in case you've got somebody who's coming in and you've got too many people to that are you want to alleviate every single worry of everybody else that's there because you want this person to be there and be welcome and to be and they will take it upon themselves to um, not inconvenience everybody that's around them um, and so the that basket is going to be uh, very rarely cleaned maybe only daily or maybe only with a spray or what have you so dirty clothes dirty clothes. so now you got dirty hands go clean them so now you've got a, a actually you can wait for cleaning the hands you can you can go and you can clean the hands and get cleaning supplies in the bathroom which hopefully are prepared ahead of time and hopefully already clean so they can wash their hands go and get the cleaning solution wash the um, what you want to do is get like um, a daily spray there's I don't know what it's called there's like soap scrum that happens on the bathtub and stuff like that and you scrub it really well once but you have the spray that that you just spray around the bathtub and the shower curtain or whatever the heck and it it eliminates the mold or whatever stuff that grows on in your bathroom that you have to spend far too much time or chemicals cleaning you can do that once a day and now you've not only have they been washing with antibacterial soap anyway but under the assumption that they've been splashing you don't like that you can also spray down the rest of the shower the most of other than giving them their own bathroom the most optimal thing that could happen is if you do all that and you let the entire area dry completely but if you're sharing a space with multiple people that's just not a thing so you shouldn't think like that or worry like that and you can leave this stuff without rinsing it off if you get the right kind um, I would not go all natural for any of this stuff at all I mean the only quote-unquote natural that you could go is with a, a, like a very very light bleach solution but that I mean if you can smell bleach it's doing bad things to you it's it's you don't want to be near bleach it's not 
not good. It's really not good. Um, it's it's even worse than the chemicals that are out there that if you don't like the the nasty stuff. Um, so yeah, don't 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 be cheap about this. So spray the shower out. You've got a dirty counter. Go clean the counter out. Make sure the hands are nice and clean as well. Now the bathroom is clean. If you have concerns, then the bathroom floor is a concern. So that can be part of the cleaning procedure. If you need to have things like sandals or replacement socks or them sitting on the edge of the, of the bathtub and, and washing their feet or something, you figure that stuff out. If you've got bath mats, they can be washed if they're the right kind almost. As far as I know, all of them can be. Mine's got a rubber backing and I wash it under hot water. You can have multiple bath mats. So you, you do you if you've got other concerns. So now you've got a bathroom that is clean. Um, Doorknobs should be clean because they have clean hands exiting. Bedroom door is clean. Now they've put their, their stuff down in a laundry basket. So be aware if it has to be relocated that you, now the hands are dirty. So you've got to take care of that. And this should be everything from beginning to end. You know, waking up, making sure all the clothes and everything are clean, but making sure your hands are clean first. Going and getting how to how to disrobe, how to shower, how to re-robe in the new clothes. Um, using the laundry basket, making sure you clean up afterwards, knowing that you're not that hands are not being retainted after the fact. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much everything that I've I've thought of today with that particular problem. And what this will mean is that. Uh, the only lifestyle changes that have to happen with the people that are sharing that bathroom, they don't have any worries, is that is the back of the door, which can be cleaned, um, and the shower rod, which can be sprayed, but uh, it's just as easy for people to just not use that space. Um, and that can just be part of your, uh, hopefully daily, but maybe just weekly, because it's, it's not a space that's actually shared, technically. Um, that's it.